Yeah, so a lot of issues raised there. And uh, we know that uh, um, the foundation of this meeting is obviously the protest we've been having. We've had one in Kano. Uh, we had the bakers, the women in Kano also. Uh, we had the protests uh, seemingly unorganized in Niger State, uh, protesting the high cost of living in the country. You know, we've also had a statement from the president, President Balatinibu, uh, since he came into town or back into the country yesterday. But let's uh, take some excerpts from, you know, those meetings we just heard right there. And joining us for this is Mr. Biodun, Dr. Biodun Adedipe. Uh, he's the chief consultant, B. Adedipe Associates, and joins us virtually from Lagos. Dr. Adedipe, good morning and thank you for your time. Yeah, a very good morning to you, Amy. Thanks yeah. for having me here. Thank you. So, I mean, uh, a lot coming out there, but we just have a couple of minutes. First of all, uh, the Minister of Finance said that we're in a better place today compared to May last year. Um, but I don't know, if you watch our sister program, Politics Today, uh, Sheung took some time out to reel out the numbers, inflation numbers and uh, value of the Naira compared to the dollar, and it doesn't seem that way. Uh, I, I guess the defense is President Bola Tinubu uh, was confident enough to take off subsidy, which a lot of governments have been running away from. Perhaps that's why he says we're in a better place today compared to, you know, uh, before now. Well, that, I would say, is dependent on which metrics you are looking at, all right? Now, if the minister looked at the fiscal consolidation and, of course, allocation to the government, that will indicate that we are in a better place, no doubt. Because when you take the exchange rate differentials, along with steady, you know, improvement in revenue collection, that shows clearly a positive trajectory in that regard. More allocations get into the states and local governments, and to that extent also, you see that featuring in the budget for 2024, which good structure is somewhat better than the structure of budget 2023. Those are positive. And of course, you can equally look at the issue of the uh, management of the FX market that you mentioned earlier some pragmatic actions taken by the central bank and how that triggered an immediate increase in the supply to the market last week now those are positive in which case the courage to take the right actions equally removal of fair subsidy which of course meant a saving of about 10 billion dollars annually that we have spent on that in the last 12 to well, now to 13 years so all of those are positive but if you look at other metrics, like rightly mentioned, the rate of uh, inflation with later data for December 2023 is 28.92%. And the real cause of the concerns of everybody, that which impact the cost of living, is food inflation, which is above 30%. And that is where the real issue is. So if I were to now look at this and take a pointer to what government should give more attention to, it will be, in fact, two things. FX is one, and that rests on building investor confidence, especially foreign investors. Yes, as finance minister said, the short and quick route to that is to increase oil production. As he mentioned, at over 1.6 million barrels per day, that's good news. Add another 20,000 barrels of condensing. That puts Nigeria in a comfortable you know, tra trajectory in terms of growing oil production and export. So which means in the near term, we may see an improvement, therefore, in FX inflows as a result of that improvement in the oil sector. Then we come to the big elephant in the room, and that's what I call it. It is what people are responding to all over the country. No, yes, not peculiar to Nigeria. The same is happening all over the world. But we know the peculiarity of our own case is the fact that a lot of what we produce in our farms goes into loss. We call it post-harvest loss. And the estimate of that is around 60%. Which means the quick wins in dealing with the major cause of, you know, this food inflation is improved security to stand with that allows farmers to go to their farms, cultivate, mature their crops, harvest, and bring to the market. That deals with supply primarily. 
Then, of course, to maintain steady supply on and off season, we need to deal with post harvest losses. And that means processing deliberate investment or put incentives for private sectors to invest in processing and storage. Mm. If we're able to do that, then we have a near term solution to the high food inflation. All right, that's the big number in cost of living. All right, Dr. Adedipe, um, just briefly now, do you see the government on an intentional mission, you know, to deal with this? We've, we've narrowed it down to food insecurity uh, and supply, which is feeding into inflation and all of that. We know that last year, July, the president declared an emergency, a state of emergency on food, on food insecurity and all of that. But do you see steps taken to intentionally deal with this problem? Um, that is what I would say. Even if the government has taken steps, they need to let Nigerians know. Because that's the issue of communication. They need to let us know that these are the steps we have taken. But for me, as an analyst, I will particularly want to hear specifics with respect to dealing with post harvest losses. But we've had this as a problem for decades. So if we are specific in dealing with that, let the government also communicate that. So people know that, yes. The challenges we are facing now will be just for a while. So but if there's no communication in that respect, connecting to what a, where the pain point is, then we see people protest and complain, you know, and do all sorts of things. They won't appreciate the gains this government has made, which of course we recognize we have made some gains, as the Minister of Finance said. But the reality is that they must put before the people specific actions they are taking that we address the, co the root cause of this problem. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll keep saying this and hope that, you know, we would, I mean, as you said, specifics, especially with timelines, I, I guess we won't, right. won't see protests. If people knew the timeline, we knew that, okay, in That's six right. months we expect this, in, in 10 months we expect But thank you so much, uh, Dr. Biodo Adedikpe, Chief Consultant, B. Adedikpe Associates. Thanks for having me.